All right. Well, Jordy Morgan's a host of Maritime Morning on News 95.7. He's plugged into everything everywhere. And today he's in the Nova Scotia legislature, moving you all around town, Jordy. I'm happy to see that. Um, let me ask you about uh, this. Uh, let, let me ask you about the Amera thing and uh, Jamie Bailey's platform in general. It sounds ambitious. It sounds great if he gets elected and can do it. Wow, he's going to cut taxes and he's going to have a surplus and it's all going to be nice. But boy, it, it sounds ambitious. It is ambitious, uh, but Jamie Bailey doesn't really have uh, a lot to lose in reaching. And I think that what he is trying to do is he's saying, look, all of this stuff can be done. We can do it if we put our nose to the grindstone and make it happen. He has to get the attention of the voters on this. This is his first time through. He's got to make a good first impression. So there is no point in Jamie Bailey coming out and be Casper Milktoast uh, opening up this election. Other people are going to basically be looking at this as a two-horse race between Stephen McNeil and Daryl Dexter. And I think that, you know, you said you watched last night's debate. I think that people's interest may be piqued a little bit by this, but it's going to be dependent on uh, Jamie Bailey's performance uh, out of the gate and into this first week of the election to really get people uh, interested in what he has to say. I, I thought Bailey's performance in the debate was effective insofar as he was being forceful with his points, and may maybe I think he actually spoke a fair bit. The guy, if there was milk toast there, I thought it was Stephen McNeil. I thought when Jamie McNeil called him a bystander, I think McNeil looks like he's trying to just not really get... Uh, too hot about anything because he knows he's ahead. Yeah, it was interesting. I was watching his performance and then in retrospect after uh, he made the point around Manning McDonald. I mean, that was planned. Manning McDonald was a Cape Breton MLA who ended up taking the last session off during the budget debate and going down vacationing in Florida. Uh, Stephen McNeil approved all of that. It has been a, a real burr in his behind, I think, and what he's been trying to do is inoculate himself against that so he's not beaten with that stick of being a, a weak leader. So that may have been on his mind. I think uh, he feels a little bit, he felt a little bit defensive last night. I think Dexter actually came out. He seemed to be very commanding. Uh, most of his messaging is essentially the same. I mean, he's been working on this story, but the one thing that I can say in Dexter's benefit, I think, is that he's smoother now. Uh, he seems to have his patter down, and uh, certainly his talking points, you know, he's delivering with a degree of passion. This is a theme we're going to get into a little later on in the program tonight, but one of the things I notice, uh, you're right, is when I hear Daryl Dexter talk to our reporters, when we ask him, he ask him questions, when I see him in debate, a lot of the phrases and the themes he wants to keep coming back to, same phrases we're seeing in NDP advertising and we're seeing more ads from them, that, that campaign looks, you know, it looks like NDP campaigns I've seen come from Ottawa or British Columbia. Uh, these guys know what they're doing. They want to win this thing. Very disciplined message, but you know what? I, I, I want to make a point about what I've been seeing coming out of uh, the NDP war room. The stuff that they're putting out here is like it really getting over the top. Uh, today they were talking about the platforms that were delivered mm -hmm. by Stephen McNeil and Jamie Bailey. Uh, they're saying, you know, that the Bailey McNeil bureaucratic consortium, or, you know, I mean, they're using language that's, that's extremely rhetorical uh, in, in most of the stuff that they're doing. They're, they're saying it's going to be dragging back into the dark ages in debt and I mean it's it is it is very very passionate very rhetorical and at times over the top as a matter of fact this morning uh, they put out a press release saying that things that Nova Scotians expect to see in the liberal platform and they were saying you know 25 million dollars for insulin pumps 25 million dollars for tax credits this kind of thing much of the what they put out that they expected to see in the platform was not in McNeil's platform on the other hand, looking at McNeil's platform, he said it was all going to be fully costed and people would have a very good indication of what the Liberals were going to do. Uh, pretty thin, I would say, in terms of costing and rationalization for uh, much of the spending. So he's going to have to go out there and defend uh, some of the stuff that's in this. They're, they're both communications documents. It doesn't look like this is going to... Uh, it, it looks like this is going to get kind of ugly and, and really the rhetoric is going to, going to heat up over the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, you would expect. Uh, let me ask you about the one moment in the debate yesterday that I found... Uh, actually, I think you touched on it. When, when, when Stephen McNeil and all the leaders were asked... Uh, your worst moment or most challenging moment in the last four years. And that's when McNeil said, well, it was a man and McDonald decision. Dexter's answer on that one wasn't eh, raising the HST and having to break my word on that one. No, it was canceling the Yarmouth Ferry. And then, of course, he brought it back. And, and I look at that and I can say, I can see a premier saying, OK, the responsible thing to do is raise the HST. I might give him a pass on that. But to cancel the Yarmouth Ferry and bring it back like a week before the election, that just smacks of crass politics to me. And yet, and yet Dexter says, oh, that's where he really learned a lot. I don't know. What did you think about that? 
Well, I, I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head there, David, is that what he's trying to do is inoculate himself against criticism. He comes out and he says, well, there's my mea culpa. We, we, he said, we, we didn't go about it the right way. It was the right decision, but we didn't go about it the right way, mm -hmm. which is, um, I, I think that's, that's a little uh, mushy as well. However, he, uh, you know, what he did is he put Graham Steele on the file, a fairly competent minister who incidentally is not going to be running in the next uh, election, but he put him on the file, got him to get the job done before the election. And I, you know, I think you have to give kudos to Steele because he managed to do that where the minister that actually was um, moved out of cabinet for a variety of reasons uh, was unable to do it. So I, I think that what we see from uh, Daryl Dexter is, in that particular comment is saying, look, I'd, I'd like I want to get this Yarmouth Ferry thing off the table. I don't think that people in southwestern Nova Scotia are going to forgive and forget quite that easily, though. Jordy Morgan, Maritime Morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Always, David. Anytime. All right. Let's go back to Citadel Hill now. Our chief Nova Scotia election correspondent, Bryn Wee, standing by. And Bryn, we've been talking about it a little bit, but in addition to Jamie Bailey and the PCs releasing their platform, well, uh, Stephen McNeil and the Liberals also released their platform. Give us a bit of a breakdown. Yeah, that's right, David. It was a doubly big day here in the Nova Scotia election because, as you mentioned, the Liberals also released their platform. Uh, and as we heard, perhaps Jamie Bailey, uh, not a fan of their platform. Obviously, the Liberals are talking very highly of this. In a nutshell, David, here's what the Liberals promise to do if they form government. Uh, they're looking at about $46.7 million in new spending in the first year, another $46.7 uh, in the second and third year. They've only really costed it out for three years, not the full four years of their first term if elected. They're also projecting about $61 million in savings, uh, and you can project that as well over uh, several years. Uh, and so what's interesting here, it's nowhere near the $200 million uh, that the progressive conservatives think they'll find in savings every year, uh, but still the Liberals are uh, thinking that there are savings there. Uh, the Liberals have said they will leave the HST at 15% right now until the provincial surplus hits $190 million, David. That's what one percentage point of the HST means. And so Stephen McNeil today said he's going to leave that HST at 15% until the surplus money is high enough to allow a cut. They're also, uh, when talking about that new spending, David, they're looking at reinvesting in education um, and also capping classroom sizes. They want to bring 100 new doctors back to Nova Scotia. And they're also, of course, talking about investments in transportation and other areas like that. So it's perhaps somewhere in the middle between the progressive conservatives and the NDP. Uh, but Stephen McNeil earlier today, David, said it's also an issue of trust and that the Liberal plan is fully costed, unlike the NDP's. Let's listen. Unlike the NDP, the Liberals have chosen to outline our proposals in detail. In part, this decision is based on our belief in the strength of our plan and, of course, because of our respect for accountability, which is why each element of this plan is fully costed. All right, Bryn Weiss. And David, also, yes. I was going to say another a one final note about that Liberal budget, David. It does not pledge, as we heard Jamie Bailey say, it does not pledge to balance the budget in the first year. They say that would be irresponsible because they're not quite sure about the math that Daryl Dexter and the NDP have been using. So Jamie, uh, uh, Stephen McNeil, rather, not committing to balance uh, Nova Scotia's budget in the first year. And that's something, obviously, the progressive conservatives have already been attacking today on the campaign trail. All right, uh, too much math making my head hurt, Brent. But thank you for clearing it all up <laughs> for me. Makes my head hurt too, I David. Know. All right.